You made it two whole days without sugar, and now you're sitting at your desk fantasizing about a cookie like it's some kind of forbidden romance. Ever wonder why quitting sugar makes you feel like an absolute disaster? Headaches, mood swings, and a brain that won't shut up about candy? Today, I'll explain sugar withdrawal like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand why the first 72 hours are genuinely brutal. You'll learn what symptoms are actually normal versus what's in your head, and how to get through it without white-knuckling your way to a breakdown. Here's what's happening inside your body when you quit sugar cold turkey. Your brain has been running on premium fuel that gets delivered instantly, no waiting, no effort required. Sugar spikes your blood glucose fast and delivers instant energy. Your brain absolutely loves that quick hit of energy and dopamine. When you suddenly stop, your body has to remember how to burn fat and stabilize energy the old-fashioned way. It's like switching from delivery to cooking from scratch. Your body can totally do it, but it takes time to remember where you kept the pans. That transition period is 48 to 72 hours. Your system is recalibrating everything it thought it knew about energy production. During that adjustment, you get real withdrawal symptoms that feel shockingly similar to coming off other addictive substances. Headaches from shifting blood sugar levels and changes in hydration hit you out of nowhere. They're usually worst on day two or three and can feel brutal. Irritability creeps in because your dopamine pathways are recalibrating. Sugar was giving you those feel-good hits, and now your brain's throwing a tantrum about it. Cravings feel like your brain is literally sitting across from you at a negotiating table. It's saying, just one piece of chocolate and I'll let you focus again. That voice in your head isn't weakness or lack of willpower. It's neurochemistry having a meltdown because its favorite drug just got cut off without warning. But here's where it gets wild, primal, and intense. Your brain acts like sugar is a life or death situation. Evolutionarily, sweet foods meant quick calories when food was scarce. Finding honey or ripe fruit was a survival jackpot. That was a huge survival win 10,000 years ago. Your brain's reward system lights up like a Christmas tree when you eat sugar. It thinks you just discovered a rare and precious resource. Except now that rare resource is available in 17 different flavors at every gas station. It's at every vending machine and checkout counter in America. Your ancient brain is running software designed for scarcity in a world of abundance. It's completely freaking out when you try to cut it off. Here's the myth we need to kill right now before you spiral into thinking you're broken. You do not need sugar to function. At all. Not even a little bit. Your body runs beautifully on protein, fat, and complex carbohydrates. These break down slowly and keep your energy stable for hours. The cravings are loud and convincing and feel urgent. They feel like they're telling you the truth about what your body needs. But they're temporary liars. It's like when your phone sends you a notification that feels urgent. You check it immediately, only to discover it's just another app you forgot to delete. The alert felt important, but it wasn't anything real. Same with sugar cravings. Loud doesn't mean legitimate. The reason everyone says day two is the absolute worst comes down to timing and expectations. Day one, you're motivated and riding that decision high where anything feels possible. You just committed to a change and feel proud and powerful. Your blood sugar is still stabilizing from whatever you ate yesterday, so symptoms haven't peaked yet. Day two brings the crash hard, fast, and mercilessly. All your motivation from yesterday is gone completely. The physical symptoms hit their peak intensity, and you're realizing this is actually hard. By day three, your body starts figuring out the new program. Energy stabilizes, headaches fade, and cravings get noticeably quieter. Most people who make it to day four are genuinely surprised. They don't want sugar anymore, or at least the pull doesn't feel like a physical need. So here's your dead simple three-day survival plan. It doesn't require perfection or pretending you're training for the Olympics. Day one starts with a protein-heavy breakfast like eggs. Eggs, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, something substantial that keeps your blood sugar stable. You're not spiraling by 10 in the morning anymore. Protein takes longer to digest and steadies everything. It doesn't cause those blood sugar spikes and crashes that make you want to eat your own desk. Keep complex carbs at meals. Sweet potato, oatmeal, brown rice, quinoa. You're not depriving yourself of energy, just cutting the added sugar that's been messing with your system. Your body needs carbohydrates to function properly. It doesn't need the 19 grams of sugar hiding in your healthy yogurt or the corn syrup in your bread. Hydration plus electrolytes is non-negotiable during these three days. Most people completely skip this part, then wonder why they feel terrible. 
A lot of those headaches you're blaming on sugar withdrawal are actually dehydration and sodium imbalance. When you cut sugar, your body releases water it was holding on to. If you're not replacing fluids and electrolytes, you feel like garbage. Drink water like it's your full-time job, starting now. Add a pinch of sea salt and some lemon if plain water bores you to tears. Get enough sodium, potassium, and magnesium every day. Otherwise, you'll feel weak and foggy, even after the sugar cravings pass. And here's the secret weapon nobody talks about. Replace the ritual, not just the food. If you always have ice cream at 9 p.m. while watching Netflix, have herbal tea and a small snack at 9 p.m. instead. Still watch Netflix at the exact same time and place. Your brain is hooked on the pattern as much as the sugar itself. It's like when you reach for your phone every time you sit on the couch. You do it, even when you have nothing to check or read. The behavior is programmed into the routine and setting. Breaking the sugar habit without replacing the ritual is like trying to quit smoking but still taking breaks outside. You're standing there at the same time every day with nothing in your hand. You're setting yourself up to fail because the environmental cues are still triggering the craving. This matters to you because most people who try to quit sugar treat it like a moral test. They're either passing or failing every single moment. When day two hits and they feel terrible and give in to a craving, they decide they're weak. They think the whole thing was pointless and stupid. But withdrawal isn't a personality flaw. It's a biological process with a timeline. Your body is adjusting fuel sources and recalibrating neurotransmitters. That takes time and patience with yourself. Expecting to feel great immediately is like expecting to run a marathon after sitting on your couch for five years. Your body needs a minute to catch up to the decision your brain just made. Day two will be the hardest, so expect it. Plan for it like you're preparing for a storm you know is coming. Don't schedule anything important if you can avoid it. No big presentations, no first dates, no family dinners where your aunt will ask invasive questions. Keep easy protein snacks around so you're never starving and desperate. Go to bed early because sleep deprivation makes cravings 10 times worse. Tell someone what you're doing so you have accountability. That's for when your brain starts whispering that nobody would know if you just had one cookie. That voice is a liar. But it's persuasive when you're tired and your blood sugar's tanking. By day three, you'll notice the cravings get quieter. Not gone, but they stop feeling like a physical emergency. By day four, most people describe feeling clear-headed. They have steady energy for the first time in years. They're shocked they don't want sugar anymore. At least the desire feels manageable instead of desperate. This isn't about perfection or never eating sugar again for the rest of your life. It's about breaking the cycle where sugar controls your mood, your energy, and your ability to function. You shouldn't need a vending machine raid just to make it through an afternoon. To recap, sugar withdrawal is real. Your brain's been relying on quick glucose hits and now has to relearn burning fat for fuel. Headaches, irritability, and intense cravings are normal for 48 to 72 hours. You're not weak, you're just adjusting. You don't need sugar to function. Your body runs great on protein, fat, and complex carbs that provide stable energy. Survival plan. Protein breakfast, complex carbs at meals, hydration with electrolytes. Replace the ritual instead of just removing the food. Day two is the worst because motivation is gone and symptoms peak. Day three gets noticeably easier for most people. You're not failing if it's hard. It's supposed to be hard for 72 hours. After that, it's just a choice. So here's the real question. What's the one food you're white-knuckling your way past right now? And what ritual is it attached to that you haven't replaced yet?